Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. This is one of those pleasant surprises. I had intended when I first started doing this to try and cut down a little bit on the odor that comes from culturing microworms. Any of you guys who have cultured microworms for any length of time know that after about two or three weeks, and sometimes a little bit longer, they get quite rank. In other words, you come down to the fish room, you notice a stench, you think something's died, and eventually you realize that it's coming from this. And there are a number of things I've run across on YouTube and other sources to try and cut that down. Uh, the best one to date was from Jason at Chatter and Aquatics, and he suggested just stirring the culture periodically. That seemed to turn it over and cut down a lot on that smell. And I tried that, and it was uh, really quite good. And unfortunately, in the long run, they still eventually just need to be replaced. It gets to the point where uh, there's really nothing you can do about it. So, you've noticed on the channel lately I've been doing an awful lot of additional culturing of other things, and that means I'm not as reliant on uh, microns anymore as I used to be. Now, I used to uh, do a lot of experiments with microns trying to get as great a production as possible. In other words, uh, try and make sure I can have a large amount of these always available. Now, the best one for that is oatmeal, and oatmeal <laughs> is probably also the greatest uh, offender when it comes to your nose. Now, I had tried mashed potatoes, the ones with uh, that come in the packages, the flakes, and it produced a lot less, and also, of course, produced a fair amount less odor. And, well, I wanted, like I said, I don't really need as much uh, in the way of microns as before, so I thought, well, I, I want to try something different. So I had a couple of potatoes that were in the fridge that were getting uh, just a little past their due in the sense that um, they weren't firm anymore, they were just a little bit soft. So I put them in a pot, left the skins on, uh, boiled them until, you know, they're like you could make mashed potatoes out of them. And then I, I left the skins on because that way I, I didn't want to have any of the starch that's in the potato uh, leach out into the water. Then I drained them, cooled them as you can see here and uh, mash them up. Now you can see the skins are on there still, uh, that's not even remotely a problem, and the consistency <laughs> is also really quite gooey, which is not, not a problem, it's uh, just something that makes it a little bit difficult to probably put in the containers. So, now I obviously have to inoculate these with uh, my culture from oatmeal. That's not really a problem. Uh, you're just going to be putting a small amount of oatmeal into these, and I don't think it's really going to cause any extra fouling. So I'm going to put these in here, I'm going to uh, spread them down, and then I'm going to inoculate them and show you, uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how I maintain them. Now, when I said it is odorless, obviously almost everything gives off a slight smell. Uh, in this case, it is... You can smell a little bit of potato, you can smell a little bit of yeast, but it's quite faint. Uh, initially, when I first started them up like this, about three, four days in, uh, there was also a bit of a tangy smell to it, uh, as in, uh, like, the metabolism that was happening was probably producing some sort of acid. But that all died down quite a bit, and I have yet to come down to the fish room and even notice these things, and even when I pull the lid off the container that you're going to see shortly, uh, they don't really produce much in the way of odor at all, especially relative to my uh, standard, which is of course going to be the oatmeal ones. Now those two packages you see in the back there, uh, I had bought those because uh, my local grocery store has one brand of uh, flaked mashed potatoes it sells. And of course whenever they get, you know, been there for a little while, uh, they put them on sale, so I managed to pick up a few packages uh, I think three of them, and they're cheap. Uh, we're looking at, uh, I think it was a dollar twenty-five for one box that has two of those bags, which is going to last me a very, very long time. But then again, the mash, the mash that you're seeing right here, right now, uh, didn't cost me anything. It's just some potatoes that were just left over, and that bag you see up in the upper right there is uh, just a little extra I had, and I'm going to save that. I'm going to put it in the freezer. And I'm going to see if, when it comes time to make a couple more of these, that I can just take that out of the freezer, thaw it out, put it in a couple containers like this, and see if it will maintain its consistency. I'm not terribly worried about it because it is mostly just a, a starchy mass, 
Uh, but I want to make sure I can do that because that would allow me to, uh, whenever some potatoes I have in the fridge are getting a little over, uh, a little past due, I can uh, just boil them all up, mash them, freeze them, and then I have these uh, standbys for whenever I need uh, to do more culture. Now this is one change I've done since I think I last uh, showed you clips of me microwave culturing. I don't take the yeast and uh, mix it in water, make a slurry out of that, and add it as uh, that water into uh, the cultures. I had to when it was uh, using it for oatmeal because the oatmeal was a lot drier and needed the extra moisture so just so it wouldn't dry out. So one other thing I've noticed about culturing it this way they are obviously a lot less productive and that actually may be uh, part of the reason why they don't really smell at all because that uh, microworm metabolism uh, making you know they obviously have some form of uh, extra oh, we'll just call it what it is excrement of some kind they do excrete something and I assume that that material will build up but the nice thing about this style is uh, it is much more regulated this culture here I have not added a bit of yeast to the surface of it in about three or four days you can see the culture is active there's some microworms moving there and it doesn't get to the point though where it climbs up the side whereas with uh, oatmeal it was always climbing up the side it get to the point where it would end up um, getting really cakey on there if I didn't harvest it every day and then the worms would die and that would also be an interesting source of smell so what I do here is I'll put a little bit of yeast on like that and tomorrow morning believe it or not they'll be cl uh, climbing all over the sides and it'll be easy for me to harvest now this one here I added not yesterday but the day before and as you can see here uh, they're still climbing up the sides and uh, that is more than enough for what I need uh, I don't need an awful lot at the moment so and if I don't want more I would stop feeding yeast to this and in about two or three days it would slow down like the first one I showed you and uh, it would stay that way I mean I've let these go for about a week without any additional yeast and I haven't had them crash or anything or any change in smell or anything along those lines and I am feeding uh, twice a day. I get enough out of two of these to feed all the babies in my fish room just from that alone. So what I've done, uh, I bought these packages because they're on sale and I opened up one of them because I thought what I might be able to do is if they get a little bit uh, mushy, a little bit soggy, uh, I can add a little bit of flake into it and then that would uh, firm it up and keep it so that, well I don't want, if there's too much moisture uh, again, you can have issues with the worms, uh, you know, suffocating and not uh, just turning the surface over. You get moles, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I want to keep it as pasty as possible. This one doesn't need it, as you can see. It is still quite firm, but I wanted to show you the procedure. All I'm going to do is take the package, uh, shake on a few flakes, uh, stir that in, and that will absorb, obviously, the extra moisture. And that, like I said, I don't know if this is really part of why it's not smelling. Because I do remember the first time when I used uh, potato flakes for culturing. They did smell less, but they smelled an awful lot more than this is. So I wanted to at least try it out just to see if it was going to end up causing a problem. And so far, no. This, like I said, this is five weeks in now. So if this were an oatmeal culture, uh, it would be quite rank. It would be to the point where I would have to be making new ones. And this doesn't obviously not smell at all. I mean, it does have an odor, but the odor is quite minimal. As I said earlier, it has a slight smell of potatoes and yeast, and that's it. It is a drastic improvement over the old culturing methods. And the other really nice thing about it is it is calibratable. If you want more microworms, uh, you just feed it a little bit more yeast, and then you get more, and if you don't, uh, you just slow down on the feeding of yeast, and it slows right down. So I'm going to keep doing this for, well, the foreseeable future. I'm going to test it out again, of course, to make sure it is uh, repeatable, which is always the important thing. And if you guys have tried uh, actual mashed potatoes and have had uh, interesting results with it, let me know in the comments below or of any other experiences you've had with microworms. I'd definitely like to hear about all that. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.